Heading into the vice presidential debate, Tim Walls is fighting nerves. Tim Walls is telling people he's just as nervous about facing J.D. Vance as he was the Sunday afternoon in August when he warned Kamala Harris in his running mate interview that he was a bad debater. Maybe more nervous, according to multiple people who've spoken to him. And the pressure is even higher, when for the first time in modern campaign history, the vice presidential debate Tuesday is likely to be the last marquee event before Election Day. With many voters still saying they don't know enough about Harris, it could be up to Walls to help convince them to trust the vice president he barely knew himself before she picked him. Talking to the aides who have coalesced around him in Minnesota and other supporters, Walls constantly comes back to how worried he is about letting Harris down, according to close to a dozen top campaign staffers and others who have been in touch with the governor and his team. He doesn't want Donald Trump to win. He doesn't want Harris to think she made the wrong choice. He feels genuine contempt for and confusion over what he views as Vance's abandonment of their common roots, and for flipping so many of his positions to fit with Trump. The digs he takes at Vance by saying he didn't know many Midwesterners who went to Yale are a glimpse into his anxiety that his opponent learned to be a sharp debater there, according to people who know Walls. And aides insist this isn't just about setting expectations. He's a strong person, said Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, who's known Walls since they were each first elected to Washington in 2006. He's just not a lawyer debater type. It's not like he was dreaming of debates when he was in first grade. Walls is confident in Harris's vision. But the governor fears he won't make his case as well as he needs to, according to people who have been speaking with him. How's debate prep going? One person at an exclusive high-dollar fundraiser asked Walls as he stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling windows in megadonor Alex Soros' penthouse living room in Manhattan on Monday. As teachers, we are trained to answer the question, and we train our students to answer the questions. The person recalled Walls saying, That's not how this goes. Inside Walls's debate strategy. In long sessions that have gone late into the night and through weekends, Walls and his team have been balancing managing the Minnesota governor's headspace, watching videos of Vance and holding mock sessions with stand-ins for the moderators, with Pete Buttigieg playing the Ohio senator. Though the transportation secretary is not going as method as Harris's Trump stand-in did and growing out a beard. The plan for Tuesday night, several people involved told CNN, will be to largely skip Vance and go right at Trump but to also squeeze the senator between his attempts to appeal to undecided voters and the always tricky task of satisfying America's most prominent audience of one. If they get their way, Trump will be triggered into a storm of anger, jealousy and pique as easily as he was when Harris poked him at their debate. Their goal is for Walls to lean into his likability to hammer Vance over. Project 2025 and 4. Selling his soul to Donald Trump as Walls put it at another New York fundraiser. People involved say Walls may even try a line that originated when Harris was preparing for a vice presidential debate before Joe Biden dropped out, asking Vance what promises he made to Trump so the former president wouldn't send an angry mob after him with the gallows, like Mike Pence experienced on January 6th. Walls and his team want common sense indignation to come across, according to several in the know. Their worry is that Vance is going to eviscerate the governor's hand to his heart, dad-joke persona and make Walls come across as either a moron or a raging bull, or even an out-of-whack liberal vouching for another out-of-whack liberal, making people feel joyful and hopeful. Traditionally, running mates serve as attack dogs. For the past six weeks of calibrated campaign appearances, Walls has been more emotional support animal for his party, whether, according to people who've been with them, that's Harris feeling buoyed by his energy and vindicated by voters' reactions to her pick. She was the one who suggested calling him, Coach, as they got ready for their first joint rally. Or the voter who waited half an hour on a rope line last week for a fist bump and walked away squealing to a friend. That's all I needed. People assume that he is a walking permission structure for rural, exurban, white male hunters, said a senior campaign aide. Yes, for the one or two points of those we want to move. But it's much deeper than that. He's a walking permission structure for people to feel joyful and hopeful themselves. That appears to be working, whether it's the Human Rights Campaign Black Tie Gala in Washington, 
where his remarks drew tears from many at the high price tables, he changed into his tuxedo in the convention center bathroom after flying and wearing a sweatshirt, or the stuffy gym at the conveniently named Freedom High School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where people like retired federal government worker Ana Gallardo said they loved walls even if they couldn't say why. Asked to name her favorite thing about the governor she was so thrilled to see, Gallardo paused. I really don't know, she said. I'm going to listen closer today. What Walls highlights about Harris, and what he is careful not to. With his twelve years in the House and nearly six so far as governor, Walls has more government experience and a deeper record than many men who've served as president. But he's leaned into the feeling of being a guy who just wandered in wide-eyed to find thousands of people cheering for him and his name on the logo. Jamming this guy into a campaign that Harris had to suddenly take over, with different camps among the staff competing for dominance, has been tricky. While some on the campaign have been eager to milk as many different appearances and fundraisers as they can out of an unexpectedly in-demand running mate, others have questioned why he is not being kept focused on the necessary basics of appealing to white men in what aides on the day he was picked were calling the Blue Walls, states. This also plays out in day-to-day -day engagement a governor who until six weeks ago was one of the most eagerly accessible democratic politicians in the country and who essentially manifested himself as the running mate with a few spicy TV appearances has done only a few interviews since being picked, all lower profile. He doesn't take questions from reporters and rarely comes to chat off the record on his campaign plane. Aides declined requests for even a brief interview with CNN. As they monitor how Vance has been fencing with reporters in Qanas after his many events, Wall's aides know their approach risks Wall's getting rusty. Their hands are tied, multiple people involved acknowledge. The vice president's staff doesn't want a contrast that would highlight how few unscripted events Harris has done. Walls, though, has reminded staffers that he wasn't the head football coach back in Minnesota. He was the assistant coach and defensive 